So it's day 11 at Asbury. It's crazy. This crowd has grown to, I mean, I'm, I'm not good at numbers, but there's potentially, you know, 5,000 people in line waiting to get into the auditorium. But this all started on February 8th inside yeah. of the Hughes Auditorium, and you were there. Tell us about who you are and what it was like being there on that Wednesday where it all started. So my name is Andrew Siemens, and I'm a student here at Asbury. That Wednesday, uh, I woke up a little bit late, uh, got to chapel, and it was a really good chapel. We, um, we were talking about the Book of Romans um, and praying for one another. We were particularly like praying for, I guess, kind of a hypocritical love that a lot of people in our community had, had felt. And then the gospel choir was playing that day and we kind of, after, the, after praying, we, we just kept going. Uh, I, I went to lunch and came back, but there's no words to really describe to the, to the actions of the Spirit. Uh, that, is, that is something that is a mystery to us. How did this start? So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, our students go to chapel all the time, every week. And on Wednesday, February 8th, um, some students just hung back after chapel. And the worship team kind of described it as like they just felt the Holy Spirit telling them to stay there. So they did. And it was the gospel choir singing that week, and they were just up there just playing away. It was just real chill, you know. It was nothing, like our chapel services are pretty chill. It's not highly produced, you know. They just kind of stayed there and played. And students stayed. And I've, I'm hearing that some of them even skipped class. <laughs> For some of them, you know, it was kind of, it started out as like this experience of like, they just were drawn there and they just continued to worship and pray. And I went in there and they were just reading scripture and just, it was like real chill. And then um, I got a text from my boss about an hour and a half later. She's like, hey, whoever's on campus, like, go check out chapel. And we're like, chapel's over. What are you talking about? And she's like, no, there's still kids in there. It was all students. There was, like, staff had gone. And and um, maybe, like, an hour and a half later, another text, like, wow, guys, like, go check out Hughes. <laughs> and so, you know, faculty and staff started just kind of peeking in, like, what's happening? And then around, I don't know, I think it was, like, 1.30 or 2, our president sent out an email that just, it was like two sentences. It just said, there's worship happening in Hughes. You're welcome to join. And that was it. And so a few people went over there. You know, most people were in class. Like, we were working. And it's like, oh, when I'm done with this deadline, you know, whatever. So uh, Thursday morning, I got in early. And they were still in there. So you're not used to seeing this amount of people. And it's a, it's a small college that you're a professor here. Mm -hmm. But tell us about the day that what people are calling revival broke out. Mm -hmm. Well, it's... Uh in the, in the most uh, ordinary way possible, I, uh, it was very unremarkable. Uh, uh, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, our students attend chapel. And um, it was excellent worship and excellent word, uh, but unremarkable. I mean that in the most um, positive way to everyone that was involved. But a few students hung around, and the best way to describe it is uh, a raw worship and prayer broke out. I actually ended up going to uh, a classroom at one o'clock to begin a class. Mm -hmm. And uh, students at that time were um, going through their materials when four young men and women banged on the door, charged their way in and, uh, and, uh, and said, there's something moving. God is moving inside Hughes Auditorium. Uh, the students are worshiping and praying with such gusto and humility mm -hmm. and grace and love. Um, their conviction was very touching. So we dismissed class after a minute and uh, I ha literally had students getting up from their chair and running to Hughes Auditorium and gather with their fellow students to worship and pray mm -hmm. in the most unplugged raw way. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was an absolute pleasure to be able to witness that and then joining them uh, in one accord really. Every single one of our students there crying out to the Lord, and um, just the authenticity of their cry, mm -hmm. seeing a generation rise. There's so much hope for the faith, but again, there's so much hope for a Christianity that is just laced with the old classics, mm -hmm. love, humility, grace, mercy. It was just a typical Wednesday chapel, um, and yeah, I wasn't expecting anything to happen. It wasn't something planned, but I could just tell that 
you know, the message was really good. The worship was really good. And, you know, people just continued staying. People wouldn't leave. I, I left because I had a meeting, actually. But I came back because people kept saying, like, something's big is going on. And I was, like, you know, skeptical about it at first. But as soon as I walked in the doors and saw what was going on, I immediately was just like, something is going, something big is happening. God is definitely changing lives. And the thing that I first noticed was just that there were students in there that I wouldn't typically wouldn't typically probably choose to be in chapel if it was their choice and I was like okay that's interesting and just the more and more I stayed in there the more I could tell this wasn't an emotional high this wasn't just a an agenda um, and it, I think that it really has helped to bring not only our campus together but our community together and has also just motivated Christians especially Gen Z's to remember what truth is and and to just reignite our faith. So I was there at the chapel and um, like you said, it was just nothing really that special about it. As a student, you go to chapel three times a week, 10 a.m. to 10.50, so I just grabbed my coffee, went in, sat for it, and it was a great chapel talking about love of God, repentance, um, all kinds of things that I personally needed to hear. I was having a bummed out day, so it was helpful to me and it was really heartfelt, but it was just, as I said, a normal schedule day. And so I left for a couple of classes afterwards and I came back about a couple hours later, had no idea it was going on. I came back, stood by the doors and one of my friends was with me and I said, I, I don't really understand what's going on and I see these people worshiping and I don't know what they have but I want it and and there were just there were probably 30 people in there worshiping praying praising and I've been going through a rough patch in my religion recently and this was just a reigniting of everything that I knew Christianity could be and it was it was a beautiful moment and God really spoke to me through that so it was it was beautiful to see it started out as almost okay, a mundane routine schedule thing but ended up being just so so much we'll more